Are you sure that this is important? Oh, uh, absolutely, sir. You'd be doing the country a huge service right now. I'd be helping America? Yeah, sure. As a matter of fact, your poll numbers suggest that this is the best thing you can do right now. How long do I have to hold this up? Just till November, 96. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rush Limbaugh. to see you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. I know what you're all saying. Gee, he looks so much younger and thinner in person. Isn't it true? You all... Th I know. It is. Everybody says that. Anyway, what are you doing here? Obviously. So somebody asked about you the other night, somebody in the audience, and I said, you, you abandoned us and went to work for some loser's show on CBS. Yes, well... Yeah, sneaking in. Look at what you... Lo Bianco joins us. Obviously, some people are going to Patsy's and have invited him to go along, and so that's why he's here. All right, now, something's not right here. I have just sat down at my circular table, and I'm not... I'm lined up perfectly, but it's not. This stuff needs to... <clears throat> there we go. I just had some fun with Deborah backstage. Deborah, I walked back there. She's singing a senseless tune, and she says, She's you know... <laughs> I think I'm losing my mind. And I said, Deborah, you better watch out because you don't have much of one to lose. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. Deborah, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I was only kidding. I was... Are you people ready to sizzle? Yeah. Are you ready to cook? Okay. Because. We have, we've had a lot of fun, and I'll tell you, I st um, the more this goes on, the more enraged I become with the unchallenged lies the Democrats are getting away with about the school lunch program, so we've got more on that on this program. Before we get to it, U.S. News & World Report, in their current issue, has taken an interesting poll on voters, their preferences, and their view of the O.J. Simpson trial. And... <laughs> Here's how it looks. Go ahead and flash it on the screen. Those who think O.J. is guilty, 47% would vote for Dole, 34% would vote for Clinton. <laughs> those, <laughs> those, <laughs> those look, look at this. Those who think O.J. didn't do it, 28% would vote for Dole, 43 would vote for Clinton. <laughs> That's the exact percentage he got, ladies and gentlemen, was 43%. Uh, little sidebar note here to Johnny Cochran. Nice try, Johnny, on that drug business attempt. Why don't you ask the detectives next time you get a chance if maybe a UFO could have landed and killed them? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I laugh about it, but all I got to do is create a reasonable doubt. And with a typical Southern California jury, who knows? They might have, they'd probably believe a UFO before they'd believe anything else. <laughs> Have any of you heard of the UN World Summit for Social Development? It's going on right now in Copenhagen. Mrs. Clinton's over there, and she just announced a $100 million federal giveaway to help the problems that exist with women in the world. Here are some of the stats from a news report that I got. Nearly one half of married women experience domestic violence. This is in the world. Uh, read another way, nearly half the married men in the world beat their wives. Two-thirds of the world's 1.3 billion uh, impoverished people are women, <clears throat> and women make up two-thirds of the world's nearly one billion illiterates, or two-thirds of the world's women are idiots. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just, I'm just trying to uh, uh, find another way to put all this in perspective for you. It's another situation where the world's impoverished are getting together, along with sympathetic members of the Clinton administration and pointing fingers of blame at the United States for all the world's problems. Timothy Wirth is a former senator from Colorado. He's a liberal Democrat. He's the second ranking, second highest ranking member of the U.S. delegation 
to this whole UN World Summit for Social Development Conference. And I just want you to read a couple of things that he has said. First thing he said is, there is no question about the fact that we have problems in our own backyard with the environment, absolute poverty, illiteracy, teenage pregnancy, and so on. The United States should not be so arrogant as to think that we have all of the answers. We have much to learn from the rest of the world. What do we have to learn from the rest of the world? <laughs> he goes on to say that um, these people around the world, there's a lot that we could learn from what they've done with their social programs. Hey, Tim, they're all abandoning their social programs. They all admit that they don't even work. Front page of the Washington Times the other day. The social libs in Canada want to dismantle the welfare state they built because it's bankrupting the country. Now, here's what's really going on. This is what frosts me. I don't know why it is that we have U.S. representatives who have to go to these world conferences and apologize to the third world for the fact that we're not one of them. Timothy Worth goes over there, and whatever he says, it basically is, <laughs> we're so sorry. We know that we're robbing the planet of every resource, and we know that we're usurping everything, and we know that we have more than you do, but please forgive us, because we really would really like to be as poor as you are, but we're just not, but we're working on it. We're working on it. We don't want you to hate us. Please love us, because we, we want to love you. And it makes me sick, ladies and gentlemen. Instead of going to the third world and say, hey, we're trying to be more like you and there's a lot we can learn from you, we ought to go to the third world and say, you guys, we'd love to teach you how to get out of the situation you're in. And the way we can do it is to have a fair and equitable distribution of capitalism around the world, get rid of all this socialism, and get rid of all the communist governments around the world and bring freedom to people. That's what we have to teach. But no, not when you let the Clinton administration go to the rest of the world. We want to learn from the oppressed and the impoverished, and then apologize that we're not either of those things. It's just, it's sickening. Now, earlier in the week, I told you about situation at Queensboro School. It's an elementary school in Shreveport, Louisiana. And we got a call from a guy who watched a television news report there where the school students were asked to sign letters to their state delegation in Congress begging them not to cut the school lunch program as the Republicans want to do. And we want to show you just a portion of this actual news report that aired, because, my friends, we have spies. <laughs> and we were able to get it. We, our cameras were not there during this particular episode, but we got a copy. And we want to show you just a percentage of it. And pay a special attention to the last part of this, where you'll see a, a, an eight-year-old student named Jason... Uh, read the letter that he wrote to the Louisiana delegation. Here's that uh, report. We had to walk fast to keep up as students at Queensboro Elementary School rolled and rolled and rolled out a 300-foot letter to Louisiana's congressional delegation. Every student at Queensboro wrote a letter addressed to Louisiana's Stop United States Stop the tape a minute. Freeze frame that. Freeze fr Can give me a freeze frame of that. Can you? Can you put that back up? Now look at this school. Does this look like an impoverished school to you? <laughs> this school looks like it was built yesterday and just opened this morning. That's one of the nicest schools I've ever seen. And look at those kids. They look like they're wearing Calvin Klein designer clothes there. It, I don't see one shred of evidence to suggest that there's any poverty here. Okay, go ahead and roll tape from that point. And even to the president, begging them not to decentralize. Hold or touch. it a minute. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold a minute. Does an eight-year-old know the word decentralized? <laughs> no, my friend. No. You know, when I stand up, you know I'm getting agitated. <laughs> I love sitting. I'm a professional at sitting. When I stand up, I'm willing to regard my own comfort for the cause. <laughs> Disregard it. Roll the uh, dis cool. disregard Free lunch program. Dear Congressman Sears, could you please find a way to keep the government from stopping free lunch? My name is Jesse Robinson. If the children or babies have free lunch, or if they have four to seven brothers or sisters, the parents can't afford it, so please find a way. Bad audio there. Let me read to you the young man's letter. Dear Congressman Fields, could you please find a way to keep the government from stopping free lunch? My name is Jason Robinson. If the children or babies have free lunch and they have four to six brothers and sisters, the parents can't afford it, so please find a way. 
I'm telling you, this is inspired by teachers. It's inspired by the school district. And when you've got an eight-year-old in a school like you just saw begging for a free lunch, isn't it safe to assume the country may be finished? You and I grew up being told there's no such thing as a free lunch, and now we get eight-year-olds being urged to beg members of Congress of all places, the government, for a free lunch. More on all this when we come back. Don't go away. much. Here we go. Washington Times from February 28th, 1995, had a story on the controversy involving the amount of money that will be spent or not spent on the school lunch program under the Republican reform. And here basically it is. The Republican school lunch program will grow by $203 million. The government at present spends four and a half billion, the GOP would spend 4.7 billion. Now that's the fact. I don't even like that. I don't like the fact we're spending more money. I thought we were supposed to be spending less on the basis there is some fraud and inefficiency that we can clean up. But that's the truth. Now listen to what the Democrats said today as this never-ending litany unchallenged by the press continues. This is from the floor of the House. Why do the Republicans want to take apples and milk away from six-year-olds? Starving children is not the solution to balancing our budget. The Republicans are taking food out of the mouths of millions of needy and middle-class children. And it's cruel to kids. It's really a contract against children. Stop declaring war on our kids. War on their children. War on their children. This legislation is mean. I also would like to speak to a moment about the mean spiritedness I'm hearing about on the floor today. But how can they be so mean spirited? These cuts are mean spirited. The mean spirited Republicans. It is mean spirited. <laughs> it is vicious. But the contract is too extreme, too mean spirited. These draconian, mean spirited, and immoral. Cuts in funding. Where we're seeing draconian cuts in all sorts of so social service programs. Once again, they're playing Robin Hood in reverse, taking from the poor to give to the rich. We're going to let the kids go hungry again. And our children are being left the crumbs of the Gingrich Revolution. Okay, now that's been going on for, I don't know, probably two or three weeks. None of it's true. None of what the Democrats are saying is true. Yet the press either locally or nationally. I can't find one example yet where the press has dared challenge any of the Republicans on what they say, or the Democrats. When, when Major Owens announced, we showed you on this show, 200 million slaves wiped out of the slavery. Only person that I know of that dared question it was right here. <laughs> but the press did not do it. The press does not do it. It's even worse than this, folks. It's getting even more cacophonous. We've got to take a break. When we come back, I want to go through three stories that are in the Washington Post today to illustrate just how obscene it is and how irresponsible the press is and how if something isn't done about this, the country is in terrible trouble. Because if we can't rely on the mainstream, mainstream institutional press to even care about getting the facts straight, then we all have a serious problem to consider. Evidence and details. Next. Don't go away. <laughs> evidence I need for this segment comes from the Washington Post of Thursday. Here is the first item I'd like to bring to your attention. The headline of this story is, Contract Leaves Bad Taste with Food Safety Advocates. Looser rules could mean more contamination, residues, and additives. Critics of the House Republican contract with America say that it may speak volumes in an area of, on which it is silent. In other words, it doesn't say anything about this, yet it speaks volumes. And that area is food. And they suggest American consumers could find the results unpalatable. Clinton administration officials and consumer watchdog groups, what a great alliance those two are, <laughs> say that under a House bill passed last week that uh, more hamburgers will be contaminated, 
more lettuce and tomatoes will have pesticide residues, and ketchup will contain additives now banned. This is from the contract item that gets rid of uh, a bunch of regulation uh, that is unnecessarily punitive on business and so forth. So now, according to the press, and according to the Clinton administration, and according to these special interest groups of the left, not only are we going to starve America's children to death, but then we're going to poison their parents. <laughs> the Democrats fear that Republicans are going to poison every America. Every American is going to die except rich Republicans who can then get tea times whenever they want them without any controversy whatsoever. I mean, this is, this is fear-mongering paranoia to suggest that Republicans want to end up contaminating the food supply of the country. So then... I hit page 25. Page 24 and 25 in the Washington Post today are incredible. On page 25 is a story about Mr. Newt. Headline, speaker hits the books to defend his attacks. Basic, and listen to the first line of this. This is a Kenneth Cooper story. Challenged on his facts. Well, Shazam. <laughs> They're challenging Mr. Newt. Mr. Newt has claimed that the 60s led to the overall decay of America via the buildup of the welfare state. And so these reporters are saying, cite your evidence. Where are your facts? How do you know? And Mr. Newt said, I'm reading it in books. I got three different books. Cite your sources. We want to see those books. And there they are. Mr. Newt came to a press conference with the three books reporters demanded so that he could cite the sources that provide the evidence for what he is saying. You remember this happening to any Democrat with any claim whatsoever? It does not happen any way at all. The liberals don't want Mr. Newt to succeed. The liberals don't want conservatism to succeed. The liberals in the press start with a basic conclusion, and that is America doesn't work, America's unfair, and they set out trying to prove it every day. Anybody making progress? Well, that's not really America. That's just we can't do it. We're not going to give it. That gets in the way of what we believe. Page 24, the opposite page, the next thing that you will see is a story that is jumped from a previous page in the paper. The headline here is, GOP fights spin war on school lunch plan. Why should they have to fight a spin war? We just showed you what the facts are. They're spending more money. The pr this ought to not even be a story. The press ought to know they're spending more. There can't be any cuts. Nobody's going to starve. Instead, the press is sitting there and saying, okay, Democrats, what do you think? Yeah, we like that. Republicans, what are you saying? You're stupid. We don't agree with anything you're saying. Let's have a spin war in our press. Here, look at this. This is Leon Panetta. This was on CBS Early Morning News the other day. What you've seen over the last few weeks is almost a full-scale assault on kids. They're talking about cutting school lunch programs in this country that serve 26 million kids. They are not. We've shown you the numbers. If I can learn it, the press can learn it. On the very opposite page, here is Mr. Newt with his three books, citing his sources as demanded by the press, and Panetta and the rest of the Democrats are getting away. Folks, we are in trouble when this passes for what is modern journalism today. When the facts are of no concern to the reporters, when the facts are of no concern to editors, when all that matters is resuscitating Democrats and liberals, you might say, what are the Republicans to do? I'll tell you what the Republicans ought to do. You know what they ought to do? Let me show you something. <clears throat> Here's just... I'm a Republican. Just imagine if watching a 30-second commercial here. Hi, I'm Rush Limbaugh. I'm here tonight to speak for the Republicans. I just want to announce to America that we do intend to starve your kids. <laughs> it is our plan within the next two years to see to it that your kids get no food whatsoever. And we're going to start with a school lunch pro program. And after we make sure they have no food, then we're going to contaminate the rest of the food supply so that whatever kids are not dead will die, and you'll die too. We want the country for ourselves. Thank you. Please vote for us. <laughs> That's what they ought to do. Just shut this stuff down. I mean, it's ridiculous. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Don't adjust the vertical control on your set. I am standing. I know I look a little bit longer here. I want the slimming effect of standing up here, folks. Uh, seriously, for a moment, uh, what to be done? What is to be done about all of this disinformation in the press? This is the kind of stuff that used to be done and still is in totalitarian countries to brainwash an unsuspecting population, to, to frighten them and to scare them and to believing the big lie. And that's part of it, too, the big lie. You just keep telling the same lie over and over and over again, knowing that you have willing accomplices in the mainstream press that will spread the lie, and eventually people will believe it. 
So what seriously are the Republicans to do? Tough as it may be, do what you can to fight back, but don't slow down on the agenda. That's what's got them upset. Remember why you're there. You were elected to do all of these reforms, paid no attention to the polls, realized that you're going to get a lot of hell for the next two to three years, and just keep doing it and ram all the stuff down their throats with a successful agenda. Don't stop and don't slow down. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Quit chewing tobacco with Mint Snuff All Mint Chew. Mint Snuff is made from mint, not tobacco. For a store near you, call 1-800-EAT-MINT. Fat, 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 fat. How do you avoid it if you love cheese? By enjoying Alpine Lay's Fat-Free Parmesan Cheese, like I do. No fat, no fat, no fat. Save up to 70% and more on your contact lenses. Have your prescription ready and call Vision Unlimited. 1-800-2-VISION. Pick a card, but not just any card. Buy a fresh deck of bicycle playing cards today. Bicycle, because your reputation is on the table. If you'd like to order a video cassette of Rush's TV show for only $24.95, just call Video Archives at 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. For a transcript, send $5 to Burrell's, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039, or call 1-800-777-TEXT.